Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and welcome to Episode 7 of our DCS F-18C Hornet Academic Series. In a previous video, we took a look at TACAN and ADF navigation. In this video, we're going to take a look at waypoint navigation, and this will probably be your most common navigation source when flying a Hornet. Okay, so now we're back in the cockpit of the Hornet, and the first thing we'll take a look at is the right DDI, where we have the HSI, or the horizontal situation indicator displayed. And in the top uh, right portion, we have a legend called Waypoint, and we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And we do so, it's gonna allow us to do some interesting work here on the HSI for the Waypoint. But up here on the HUD, we see the indicator number for the Waypoint, in case W0 for Waypoint 0, the distance towards that Waypoint, about 10 mi miles, and at the very top along the heading tape, we have a heading bug, which indicates the direction to fly to reach the selected waypoint. Here on the HSI itself, uh, from a top-down point of view, we have a dot with a circle around it, and that indicates the actually selected waypoint uh, location. Uh, right now, waypoint zero, but we can go ahead and say waypoint one. And then we have a head and tail for the flight direction. And on the uh, top right corner, we have the heading towards the waypoint, its distance, and the time to reach it from hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, below here, we, again, we have the arrows to actually cycle through the different waypoints. And the waypoint system itself in the Hornet can have up to 60 different waypoints in its database. And with that database, you can then populate up to three sequences of waypoints. So right now we have sequence one uh, selected as indicated at SEQ1. But if we box that, we can now see the uh, sequence of waypoints laid out with a dashed line connecting each of the waypoints in the sequence. And using the up and down arrows, we can now cycle through the different waypoints of this sequence. So I'm gonna go back up or back down to say waypoint one. And as I said, we can have up to three different sequences, and when it's boxed, we'll show the sequence, but we press it again, and we'll go to sequence two, and sequence three, and now back to sequence one. Uh, along the bottom, we have an auto uh, push button, and all this simply does is when you're within close proximity of the selected waypoint, it will then automatically cycle to the next waypoint, and this can be pretty handy uh, in that you won't have to take off uh, your hands off the HOTAS, in order to be cycling waypoints all the time. Uh, next, let's go ahead and press the uh, data push button. And this will bring us to the uh, waypoint subpage. And based on the waypoint selected, let's say waypoint two now, we have the geographic coordinate of that waypoint, its grid location, and its elevation. Uh, below that, we have offset information, but that'll be the subject of a later tutorial. Uh, along the bottom, we see the actual waypoints that comprise the sequence, in this case, one through seven. Now, at any point, let's say you wanted to uh, modify an existing waypoint or uh, create a new waypoint, it's actually quite simple. All you would do is select the waypoint you want, uh, select the USC function, then you have position, which will allow you to enter geographic coordinate, its elevation, its grid, and its offset. Now let's say you have a existing sequence and you wanted to add a new waypoint uh, at the end of it. And it's very simple. All you're gonna go is your sequence USC. And then we use the uh, insert up here on the USC. And let's say I want to add waypoint nine at the end of the sequence. So I just go ahead and press nine, enter. And I have nine added, uh, very simple. And just as simple, let's say I wanted to remove one. Uh, let's say number four. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear it. Uh, delete, four, and enter, and it's gone. And uh, finally, let's say you want to go ahead and uh, insert a waypoint inside an existing sequence rather than at the end. And you'll do that to place a waypoint to the left of the one you choose. So let's, in this case, say I'll select number three, but I want to add number four back. So I'll go ahead and clear out. I'll go to insert. Uh, number three is my, my control, enter. And now I want to add number four and enter. And now you can see number four is back. Now, very simple, but also very powerful. Uh, finally, the last thing I want to talk about is the uh, timer target function. 
And this allows you to set a function to be at a very specific location at a very specific time. And it's comprised of three different elements, your ground speed, your target, and your actual time on target uh, setup. So what we're going to do is, uh, first we're going to set our ground speed, and this will be the uh, ground speed for the last leg of the sequence before hitting the target. So in this case, let's set it at uh, 500 knots. And you see uh, 500 down here. Uh, next will be the time on target, and this will be a relation into our Zulu time. So again, clear it, uh, time on target. So let's go at 14, uh, 40, 0, 0, enter. And now we have popped it down there. And the last element is our actual uh, target location, which will be a function of an existing waypoint. So in this case, let's make it waypoint 6. So target 6, enter. And you can see the box around 6. Now, what's really cool is up here on the HUD now, we have an arrow. And this is uh, essentially our early, late arrow uh, in relation to that time of target. If it's too far to the right, it means you're too fast and you'll get there too early. But if it's too far to the left, it means you're too slow and you'll get there late. So what you're going to do is you're going to be adjusting your airspeed just to have that uh, arrow right there in the middle as close as can be. So anyhow, that's a little look at the Waypoint system. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.